Alright, hi there, I'm Zeddy Gallus, and welcome back to Rule the Waves, or I guess welcome to Rule the Waves, if you just skipped ahead to the uh, first episode. Uh, in episode zero, we just went over Doctrine and just some basics about the series, but today we're jumping in proper. Uh, so here we are, we're Italy, it is 1890, uh, and we are getting ready to hopefully conquer the Mediterranean. That's the goal early on. Uh, try and get as much of the med as we can, uh, and then from there we'll go ahead and try to establish a global colony. Uh, but a focus on the Mediterranean will mean we can just have one very powerful fleet to defend our interests uh, and let us focus on that. So, step one is going to be kind of to establish things. So, with my plans to have a really powerful navy, um, we need to be on top of research. Uh, you'll hear some people say you really shouldn't change the research budget too much. Uh, at least I have heard other people say so. Um, I've had a lot of success bumping this up quite a bit. Uh, you'll find, you'll get a warning when it stops being worth it. Uh, you'll start to get these events saying that you have technologies that are beyond what current science can kind of establish. Uh, and so then you can dial it back but until you hit that point like i i find 11 percent is a really good kind of high research range uh i played with a little higher i've not had any issues with it but i just want to be able to actually uh you know still have money to construct a fleet uh we also need to set our research priorities up uh so definitely early on we want guns on high you you want good high quality guns um as soon as possible you want high quality armor as soon as possible. Um, and then additionally, like we have an advantage in ship design and we should exploit that. We should definitely go high on there. There's definitely an argument to be made to say like, let's lower this down to medium. We have an advantage and use that research somewhere else. But I think that's also important. Uh, a lot of this is all important. And like, that's something that's really well represented here is like, there's no right answer. You know, fire control as well is really important. Uh, a lot of these are important right now. Like, if you don't have one of these things that I've set to high, you're in trouble. You know, if you don't have good armor, uh, if you don't have good fire control, like, your shells won't land. You won't be able to hit, and you'll fall behind in, in that range, and uh, and people will just outrange you uh, and, and destroy you that way. Uh, if you don't have good ship design early on, you won't make dreadnoughts. You'll, you'll be stuck you know, with pre-dreadnoughts, because you won't have the ability to put the turrets you need to actually make a dreadnought. Um, so, the other thing as well here uh, would be, oh, and I just realized with display capture, I gotta be careful with that, you'll see everything that, uh, there. Anyhow, uh, learning, <laughs> learning process here with the recording stuff. Um, we're doing a display capture for this game because, of course, it's many windows you can't really capture just one window uh and your projectiles have to be really you know they have to be able to get the feet armor there's just so much so i i'm gonna set a lot of things to high at first there's nothing i want to set down to low uh the reality is is even the things i left on medium they're important uh, and i do need those asap so 11 percent. those are our priorities right now uh, and then we're going to work on a design i need a battleship design i need a battleship design yesterday um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use all of our displacement uh, that we have available so we can build up to 15,000 ton uh, displacement vessels. Um, and I will usually start out with an auto design. Uh-oh. I may have to restart this episode. I'm realizing... Oh, no, no, never mind. Sometimes you get those uh, memory errors if the game's been running for a while. And if that happens, unfortunately, the only option is to restart the game. Uh, you can usually still save the game, but uh, I have definitely had these things where it just seems to lose where its memory uh, is stored. So, all right. So taking a look at what we've got an auto generation of, let's go ahead and bump that displacement back up. I usually will do an auto generation and then tweak it. I will tweak the graphics as well uh, if I feel I need to, um, you know, but the stock generation does a really good job generating believable ships. Uh, so this Lepanto class uh, battleship that we've made here, 
we're probably going to go ahead and bump that freeboard up to normal. We have a lot of excess weight remaining now because I've gone ahead and bumped this displacement up. So we'll do that. Still have 2,000 available. We're going to put that belt coverage to normal. We're not doing a narrow belt. And 6-inch belt is not going to cut it, you know. Uh, what do we have for gun qualities? We can't make 11-inch guns. We can't make 13-inch guns. Yikes. Big yikes. Nothing really great. So, I mean, for our big guns, we should just go the biggest we have of, of quality minus 2, and that's 12. So, we're good that way. Um, on these pre-dreadnoughts, I find that these guns are... You kind of have to have them, but they don't do the bulk of the work. It's it's really your secondaries that tend to do a lot of the work and the heavy lifting on these early dreadnoughts. These things just don't fire often enough. The fire rate on these 12-inch negative two guns is is frankly terrible. Um, so 19 knots. I, I like to design ships as a... Um, can I get the best of everything I want? So I'll put literally the, the you know, the, the dream specifications in, and then I tend to negotiate with the ship afterwards. I'll be like, okay, uh, you know, I can't have everything I want. Obviously, we're well overweight. Let's start to see what I'm willing to trim. Uh, so we're going to go right overweight at first. I'm going to want 20 knots. You know, I'm going to say for armor, looking at these 12-inch guns, like, I know we're going to need up to at least probably, I'd ideally like like nine and a half inches of belt armor. Deck armor, I'm actually going to say we can go down to two. Realistically, deck armor doesn't become much of a concern until much later in the game. Um, as you can see, like the deck penetration values up to, you know, 7,000 yards is zero. Because the angle in which you're, you're hitting a deck is so high, your belt's just going to shatter or ricochet. Uh, there's absolutely no chance for it to go through and even just one inch of armor is enough to completely defend So you'd say well, why not just put an inch of armor? You want a future proof, right? It won't be long until better guns are out there In fact, I'm sure the British probably and I know for a fact I've checked this before uh, They have better guns like I think they have some uh, minus one quality guns and they even have like a, a zero quality like eight inch gun or something like that um, and as the gun quality goes up, they're able to start penetrating more and more armor, including deck armor at closer ranges. Um, and as accuracy goes up, you're going to start hitting these long-range shots. You'll be engaging at 15,000 yards, and you'll have two, three inches of deck penetration at that point uh, with a large gun. But in this case, two inches is plenty to, to future-proof us for a while. Um, we have no deck extended. Our counting tower is 11 inches, which is fine. Turrets are 10. That's fine. Realistically, there's a, I've noticed a couple of different philosophies about this. Some people think that, you know, you can have the turrets be a little less than the belt armor. And the idea is, is that the chances of the turret getting hit are lower. It's a smaller part of the ship, uh, so you can armor it a little less. And if you just take out a couple of guns, well, that's not a big deal. However, whenever a turret's hit, there's a chance it explodes and takes your entire ship with you. So I always believe it should be a little heavier than your belt armor, because realistically, your ship's useless without its guns. Um, so my philosophy is always a little bit more armor than the belt if you can help it, so that's perfect. Turret top being the same as the deck. My Again, my philosophy would be to actually up-armor this a bit, but at, during this age, two is fine. We'd be actually okay with one and a half on both, probably for ten-ish years. Um, but we're fine. Secondary guns with two inches of armor is great. That means that they're splinter proof, most likely. Uh, so if a large shell lands near one, uh, the fragments, which are simulated, this game's awesome, um, hopefully won't perforate the turret, won't damage the turret. It should be pretty sh uh, splinter proof. Uh, we have no torpedo defense available. Accommodation is at normal, which is fine. Uh, later on, you definitely want to make sure you're trying to get as spacious of things as you can. And also, just being Italian... I think we should try to roleplay a little bit and have spacious ships. Um, if you've seen some images of some of the Italian battleships, their interiors are immaculate. Like, the Italians know how to make something look incredible. And they didn't skimp with their battleships like and, and the other ships. Like, the aesthetics of Italian ships are glorious. Uh, and honestly, like, a lot of people give the Italian Navy a lot of flack, but they had a lot of really good ships uh, with a lot of really good features uh, they were very advanced for their era a lot of times um i think there was issues with the command and and, and admiralty uh, and the utilization of their ships uh if i recall they 
were afraid to use them. Uh, a lot of times they just wouldn't have the fuel, and they'd say, "Well, we and we're not willing to risk a battleship." So they just keep the battleships in port. I think Yamato and it, it, with Japan kind of thing, where well, yeah, we have this huge super battleship, but if we lose it, it's such a huge blow to national morale that we have to keep it in dock. Uh, not to mention the amount of uh, fuel that would have used, which could have gone to other stuff. So similar thing with the Italians with a lot of their battleships. I'm on a tangent. That's going to happen a lot. Uh, but anyways, uh, in this case, uh, we're not, we're going to endeavor not to do that. I, I do like to use my ships, uh, but we are going to make them look nice and we are going to hopefully give them good accommodations whenever possible. Uh, we still have weight to play with, which is always nice to see. One of each torpedo early dreadnoughts that actually can be useful. We're going to leave that on. Uh, no additional fire control options. Um... In terms of aesthetics, Victorian turret is fine. That's kind of the era we're in. It's the first pre nuts we're making. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, in terms of secondaries, 7-inch guns. I have minus 1 8-inch guns, so let's use them. They're the biggest secondaries I can install. Can I do dual? I can do dual... Auto place these so they end up in a spot that makes sense. Really? I start out with the technology to have dual 8 inch secondaries without penalty. Well, that means that we're going to go for a very heavy uh, secondary battery. I'm going to ideally. I'd probably put two more, even ideally, but we'll, we'll start with this concept. Um, and I am going to want. Sponsons on these because I'm gonna want these to look like they're kind of out on sponsons at least especially these middle ones. We'll find them Oh, no, you can't choose that. So yeah, there we go uh, For the front guns, let's set their position So if you just right-click and set position you can move them around and it will auto mirror it So if you just want to find a spot that makes more sense for it like somewhere like that, I think that makes a lot of sense um We'll set the position of these ones out just a little bit so we're not occluding that uh, kind of antenna assembly. Which I don't know if that makes much sense. I don't know if they're antennas or what they are. Oh, they're probably ropes. I'm realizing this now. Those are not antennas. They're they're uh, not ropes. Cables helping stay this uh, this mast, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna set this position too and put it to a spot that makes some kind of sense. I do think I. Ideally, I want another set, but we're already over, uh, so I'm going to kind of pre-negotiate with my design and say, no, I, I can't do that. So that's fine. Uh, and with that, we're getting, this is a good dreadnought to me. Uh, again, these 8-inch guns are going to do a lot more work than these 12-inch guns. Uh, and even our heavy cruisers right now are only going to be rocking for... Um, four eight inch guns so having a total of you know six per side means each side has more firepower than a standard heavy cruiser um with a nine and a half inch belt put on this running at 20 knots these things are useful and they're going to retain their use for a long time um one thing you'll run into sometimes is you know your first dreadnoughts have to be scrapped really quick because they just don't retain their use. Um, they're too slow to keep up with your battle fleet. They're too slow to do anything. Uh, so I think really prioritizing this high speed, quote unquote high speed for, for a pre dreadnought 20 knots is fast. Um, you know, it is important. And with the 12 inch, four 12 inch guns, they're still highly capable of killing any other dreadnought that's available. Although you'll find once torpedoes start to really enter warfare, um, I actually don't even think I have anything. These tubes might not be able to load anything uh, because I have no torpedo technologies even available. That's funny. Uh, we just know we need to install tubes because we're working on them. Um, but yeah, once torpedoes enter uh, naval warfare, they're a much bigger threat. Uh, I find that these combats go that you'll cripple a ship uh, with multiple fire. You're, you'll slow it down. It'll flood. It'll it'll be on fire. Uh, you'll cause casualties. Or in a long battle, the stokers will just get tired. These are vertical triple expansion engines with coal. You're relying on some guy. Oh, hello. There's my kitty. Making a big fuss for some reason. Hey, bud. Um, 
but these cool uh, vertical triple expansion engines, like they require uh, coal to actually be shoveled into the boilers, and those people get tired, and that's modeled in this game. Uh, so when the ships start to slow down to the, uh, a combination of all of those different things mentioned, torpedoes then come into play and you'll send in some light boats. And at that point, a lot of the secondaries will be blown off the ship too because you've been firing at it for a while. So it's safer for your boats to get closer. And that's what will actually sink the large ships early on, uh, especially if you have a good amount of armor like this. So that's really the only way to do it. Uh, and again, another, another kind of benefit to the speed is that if you have this much speed, you can take more damage and still retain more speed because you just have more horsepower to start with. So if you lose 50% of your horsepower, you had more than a ship that, say, was running 16 knots with the same displacement. Uh, big tangent to say, speed good, especially early on. Uh, you really want to have a good amount of speed on your pre-dreadnoughts. So we're going to keep that 20 speed pretty much no matter what. Uh, in terms of rounds per gun, we're going from 7-inch guns that they, they recommended this many rounds to 8. So I'm actually going to lower this down to about 150. That's going to save a bunch of weight as well. We're down to only 67. And then I'm going to do something to ruin it. I would like these to be 3-inch guns. Uh, I find 2-inch guns just... Oh, wow, we have quality 1 3-inch guns. Okay, well, that yeah, that confirms that. Um, I want these guns to be 3 inches. Uh, we're going to lower the ammo to about, say, 200 per gun. Actually, let's take a look because we... Yeah. Uh, you can see sometimes like it actually doesn't even save weight because uh, it's such a small difference. It's not even a ton of weight, so... Uh, we'll just leave it at 200 because that's kind of the most efficient for the 53 tons of ammo that we're carrying for these. You know, you see these numbers, and I'm sorry, tangent again, but this is this is what I'm like. Um, you see these numbers, and you see you see this 53 tons, and you don't think much about that, right? You just see 53; it's a small number compared to this. That's 53 fucking tons of ammunition. Think about how much weight one ton actually is insanity right and then you, of course you look at the main guns and i mean these guns are running 324 uh 324 tons of ammo just for the main guns and later on you have over a thousand tons of ammunition anyways sorry just a bit of a tangent but like battleships are nuts right it's just the scale of them are insane it's so hard to wrap your head around it sometimes uh in general here I think otherwise we're good. And of course now we're at 161 tons over. Uh, so there's no way I'm fitting in another pair of, you know, these. Like we're going to be over 500 tons over. Not unless I start to negotiate. So I could argue if I want those guns, maybe, okay, well, what if we go down to nine inches of armor? And what if we say our conning tower? Why don't we just match the belt for the conning tower? That gets us to 24 tons. And I think with this ship i'm happy i don't think we need anything else uh it is good to have an armored conning tower i've seen some people try to gain a bunch of extra weight by you can see right here the conning tower weighs 195 tons of armor um people try to gain some weight based on just like putting this down to zero but then what happens is an he shell from a, a light cruiser hits your conning tower and takes out your your command crew and this ship just loses a ton of effectiveness so uh, you should at least try to keep it around the belt. I, I will go against that. I will, to squeeze things in, I will absolutely be like, eh, I could just lower the conning tower a bit. Um, but it, it, it usually it usually sucks. Like it usually does actually affect you. Uh, if I put this to 9.5, that gives me 90 tons to play with. I wouldn't mind carrying a little bit more ammunition for the 8-inch guns, so we're going to do that. Um... Otherwise, I think this is a good ship. 20 knots, standard freeboard, medium range, vertical triple expansion engines, which is all we have at the moment. Um, engine priority on normal. If you want to save some weight, you can set this to speed and look at all that weight. But do you really want your battleship to suddenly have to fall out of formation because its bearings and its engine have overheated? I don't. So we're going to leave on normal. I actually like to try to get reliable ships as often as I can. Uh, how much would a reliable ship? Yeah, that's way too much weight. Um, but ideally, at least normal. Uh, if you can fit reliable, do reliable. These things are important. A lot of people really just focus guns and armor. 
Uh, the engine is what drives the ship. Don't neglect it. This is a great ship. The Lepan Lepanto? Lepanto. Lepanto. I'm not gonna... I was gonna go into an Italian accent. I can't. I'm not even gonna try. It would honestly probably just be more offensive than anything else. Um... Yeah, I'm just quickly looking it over. I don't see anything else that I can do. 16, so 8 per side, 3 inch guns for small ship defense. Our main armament, honestly, are the 8 inches and then we have the 12 inches. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. Okay. And it's going to cost us a little bit and take 3 months. I can't afford that. Oh. Oh. What a, what a, what a garbage, <laughs> what a bad situation. All right, well, and the nice thing is, honestly, so long as you remember the main thing, so we're doing 20 inch, you know, nine inches of belt armor, we can recreate this really fast. So, uh, unfortunately, we're gonna be unable to save this, which is a shame. Okay, so let's actually advance some time so I have enough money. One month will do uh, to actually design a battleship. So uh, I could be building forts, but we're not going to. We just get some events too. So let's just go ahead. So Britain's building more stuff. Austro-Hungary. People are building stuff. Uh, nothing to be too concerned about. And hey, we have a huge monthly balance now. So after the first month's recalculations, I guess I figured out what we're doing here. Uh, I, yeah, I should probably lock the taskbar down. Again, recording teething issues. This has been a long time since I've done anything like this. Uh, we'll nail it down between episodes. So the other thing I want to do early on, and because I have the money, I just want to continue to build docks. I want docks to keep up. I want to be able to build the biggest, baddest ships on the planet. And we're going to try to continue that. Uh, now we have enough to actually design our ship. So unfortunately, we're going to have to recreate it. But it's pretty easy to do. And I'm just going to hit auto until I get like the design style I like, which would be this one here. That's what we were doing before. Throw the weight up to 1,500. There's those turrets. Move these to 8 inch. Uh, I'm going to change the aesthetic to... Well, let's guess... Oh, they had sponsons. That's why. So we'll put sponsons on here. Put these as dual guns. Make sure that's not the case. Normal freeboard, regular belt, nine inches, uh, nine and a half here, two, two, and two. Uh, auto plays two more of these. And that's in a fine position, actually. I'm just gonna change this guy's position a little bit. And then we'll change this guy's position a little bit. Uh, for position, you always want to do port guns. Uh, and hey, you don't have the right amount of guns here, so 16 of these. And now I get suspicious because I'm hit. Ah, free board. Normal. Uh, I'm saying now I'm starting to get suspicious because I still have too much weight remaining from my. Hey, I kept the same name too. Um, did I accidentally have 13 inch guns selected? I think I might have, which wouldn't have worked. Because the guns looks a lot smaller. Again, I, I guess I gotta look, look at the video and find out. But that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Ah, speed. That's why. Now you can see it's almost exactly. So uh, I had this down to 200. Additional armament. That's the same. Somehow I've managed to get 10 more tons. Da, 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 da. Trying to figure out where that's... Ah, uh, Conning Tower. Uh, put you down to the same as our thing there. Nine. And we have that 32. So we've remade the ship pretty quickly. So as long as... like That's why when you look at a ship, you're only looking at specific things. Because that's really what's important. The rest of the ship is kind of secondary. Uh, we're good there. We're good there. We're good there. 20 knots. 9 inch belt. 9.5 inch turrets. Good amount of ammo. Running these dual 8 inch guns. Bunch of 3 inch guns. Same finish. And there we go. Bam! Done. Okay, now we're actually going to start building those. And I should have done this already. I'm going to scrap this. 14 months for this garbage ship that I don't want. Yeah, we're getting rid of that. 
Uh, we'll let these heavy cruisers finish. I think their design was fine. I'm not a fan of this one, but it, it's fine enough. The six inch guns and the seven, like it's a light heavy cruiser. Um, the thing is with this game with any start on the 1900s start, you just have to play with what you've got. So I'm gonna let these finish, uh, but we are gonna build a bunch of battleships as soon as I can. Uh, in terms of fleet two, we don't have anybody who's an active thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say these garbage ships that I don't like, throw them in a reserve fleet. I don't wanna pay their full maintenance fee. Um, otherwise, I'll keep everything else on duty. Uh, this is not a huge fleet. Oh, well, the other thing I didn't do is actually set my doctrine doctrine. I want us to have gunnery as a focus um, and damage control when I get it, but I'm probably not going to worry about night fighting. Um, night fighting actually does affect how often you get night battles because your navy's actively trying to get night battles if that's part of your uh, uh, doctrine and uh, night battles are, are, are terrifying uh, they're really dramatic because you may just lose ships that you're not expecting to you'll be like oh I'm winning this is great and then a flotilla of destroyers comes out of the darkness and sinks your battleships like it, it's terrifying I don't want to worry about that and we're not worrying about that so we're actually going to apply that and we are going to do no, I don't even have anything else so that's fine but yeah, we're going to start that right away. Uh, and we're going to continue on. We're going to wait until that's done. Would you look at that? A, a whole, almost whole half hour episode here. And, and that might go a little long because it's the first episode. Uh, and we've just advanced a couple of turns. Uh, and that's how this game is. I could be designing and building other ships. Uh, I should probably design a new light cruiser and such. But you really should do them in phases. Um... Nice. I'm just reading all this here really quickly. Uh, you want to design your, your navy in phases. And the main reason is... Ooh. I'm fine with the tensions being raised a bit here. So we're... Yeah. So a new hawkish government wants to raise armament expenditures. Uh, what's your reaction? So this is what I mean when you say you're just the, uh, the naval admiral here. Uh, you don't... I have a direct say, but like you can influence things and say, well, okay, the, there's a government right now that's hawkish. Uh, they're very, you know, militaristic. They're trying to, to push up the military. Uh, you can say, sure, absolutely. Let's just, just give me that money. I'm happy to get it, which is probably what I'm going to do. But you can see it's going to raise tensions quite a bit because everybody else is going to see us and go, dude, <laughs> why are you building up so much? Like are, we should be worried and they're going to want to build up to maintain parity in the oceans. Um, you could also say, like, I would still like the budget increase, but I don't want the tension to go up too much. Or you can actually say, like, shh, don't do it right now. And the only time that would be really necessary is if, uh, like, these tension meters on the side were near the top and you didn't want to go to war. And you can see this would cost me a prestige, which is down in the corner here. Um, that prestige goes down a couple more points. So you start at 20, you get down to probably, I've not gone down more than 18 uh, I'm assuming like 15, that's, I've heard like that's kind of the zero with other players that have mentioned the game. Uh, and you don't have to hit 15 to be out. You might just have a random event and, and lose at like 16. Uh, so I try to always maintain 20 or above at almost all costs, even if it kind of guts you and, and, and causes you to make some really terrible decisions. Anyways, uh, we're going to ensure the safety of our nation because I want that money. Higher tensions also directly equals higher budget. So this is their yearly budget. Bam, we've got a bunch. And early pandas are ready for construction. That's nice. Uh, so we're going to build some of them. Uh, so it's the first of it. So I was going to suggest, hey, you might as well name it after the actual class, which is historical and makes sense. Uh, at least I think it's historical. There must be some nations that don't follow that, that have a good class name that doesn't follow, like, the first of the... Well, I know there's some that, like, the, the named first actually launches second or third. Anyways... I'm not going into that full tangent right now, but these cost 1800 to make per month. I have an current, like a balance available per month of 4,600. So we can build three and be in a slight deficit, or I can build two and have some headroom. I'm going to say two and have some headroom just in case something bad happens. I don't have a huge budget, like a, a funds, 
Like, there's not a lot of money just sitting around in the bank right now. Uh, so if I go to a negative for a long time, it, you know, I'll, I'll go into the negative negative, like actual roll in the negative, and then I'll lose prestige. So we'll build two. Uh, and those are going to take 31 months because they're battleships. They're, again, going back to the scale of things, like they're, they're freaking huge, man. Uh, and they take several years to build, so... Uh, now we're just going to kind of truck along. Um, France is considering a naval rearmament program. What should we do? So we can raise tensions with France by quite a bit. Uh, get some prestige and get some budget. We can probably take that prestige hit. I bet it'll put them to here. But it means one wrong move and we're at war with France. Looking at the Almanac... France is about the same level of tech or level of like weight. And again, they have to be across the, in sorry, that's a budget. I'm looking at the wrong column. They have a lot more ships than me, but they need to have their ships spread amongst the planet. Whereas we only have the med to worry about. They have more battleships than us. They have more heavy cruisers than us. They have more ships than us across the board. If I were to fight France early, I think we could do okay, but I don't know what their ships are like. Um, they're working 13-inch guns with 11-inch side batteries. That's freaking cool. That's a neat design. And actually a scary design. 13-inch belt. Those Charles Motels are scary. What is with these advanced designs? I didn't realize France starts off with some of this tech. Like to have uh, a third mid mid turret early on. I have to do a France run sometime. I have not done a France uh, campaign. Anyways, um, so for now, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to do that either. But if we're going to get tension anyways, I'd rather the budget and the prestige. Let's see how bad it is. It's not even that bad. And the extra prestige, like each prestige point is a blessing because I can spend that later for something. So, And our budget's gone up a bunch, and I think we even have enough now to build another one of our battleships. So let's do that. So we've got three under construction now. Excellent. Uh, and we still have a little bit in the bank. So a colonial crisis with Austria-Hungary has risen. Do you see a problem with that? Austria-Hungary doesn't have any colonies. I don't understand what's going on. You know what? Honestly, our borders are so close, it's probably a border dispute. But anyways, also, it's, it, this is just an abstraction in the game. Um, again, this is kind of a good one. I wouldn't mind fighting... I, I would love to fight Austria-Hungary early. I think... Like, we, we already are beating them. Um, in terms of our fleet tonnage. Um, so, yeah, bring it on. Uh, I'd rather get the extra tension uh, budget and prestige. Tension is even a good thing. And there we are. I wouldn't mind an early war with Austria-Hungary. Um, what we'll do is we'll run this episode until something interesting happens. And then we'll leave it on a cliffhanger for the second. Uh, hey, that's nice. So we have private shipbuilding making our, do our docks bigger. Which happens a lot early on, which is nice. Uh... That compounded with our, our own uh, subsidized dock building means... I don't know if it's subsidized. We're doing it for the Navy. If the government was doing it, it was subsidized. That's an interesting distinction. I'm not sure to think what, how to think about that. Because we're building it for ourselves. If the government were to build it for us, it would be subsidized, I think. In this case, we're directly building it as the Navy... And there are docks, so I don't think it's subsidized. Although we are the government, uh, there's anyways. That's that's ped very pedantic. Um, moving on, let's continue on with time. Hey, some of our light cruisers that were already being built, and that's going to free up some balance. And you know how much balance that freed up? Do you know how much balance that freed up? That's right. It's enough to build another ship. Well, not quite. We're four hundred, but I'm I'm willing to go into the red by four hundred. Bing, bang, boom. Yeah, random name. There we are. Uh, Re Regina Margarita. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, we're in the red by 300, but we've got 13,000 in the bank, so let's not worry too much about that. Ooh, hold on. Oh, poop. I hit the X button. 
so now I don't have much experience dealing with uh, commanders. And Xing it apparently still added people to it. Okay, my bad. Uh, I again, this game I do want to do that early on. So it did add a random guy on here. I think when I hit the X button, I want to manually do my officers. I want to kind of play around with that and, and get to know my officers because I think that'd be really fun. Um, I think there's a lot of politics that gets involved there, and, and that's fun. So uh, in the future, I will make sure that when the ship is built. Uh, that I, I try to assign them myself. I'm, I'm kind of annoyed that there isn't a button there uh, just to, like, take you to the officer screen and have you assign it. It's like, do you want to auto-sign? Yes, no. And if you get no, I assume. Anyway, we'll explore that further. Moving on. Hey, well, that's another nice bit there. Uh, temporary setbacks so or AP stuff hasn't improved yet, but they're working on it. Tensions are naturally dropping across the board, which is fine. Uh, I just want to keep Austria-Hungary tensions high, potentially. Uh, Piedmont is going there. And looking at this, so in two years, we'll have, you know, just over two years, we're going to have four battleships that are kind of more modern, useful ones available. Uh, I'm probably going to scrap these as soon as that happens. I mean... <laughs> I'm, always, I'm tempted to just scrap them out the gate, but, but I'm sure the Prime Minister would step in and be like, hey, you need to make sure you have enough battleships. Um, so we'll, we'll keep them, but I want to get rid of these ASAP. Uh, they are, frankly, terrible. Um, so... Hey, so our heavy cruiser that we built actually is having trouble reaching its design speed. Uh, this is a thing that historically happened. I mean, you know, ships are huge. Uh, again, scale of them is kind of almost unimaginable. Uh, and sometimes part of their design just, you know, even though they're designed to go a certain speed, a bunch of maybe workers who were a little inexperienced and, and, and made the components a little heavier than they're supposed to be means that it's not hitting at speed or, heck, you know, the power plant just that you ordered from whatever company uh it doesn't actually reach the specifications it's supposed to after it's built uh you know you deal with it it's probably about a knot slower and hey the spanish are building a heavy cruiser which looks very standard for this time frame four inch belt does 20 knots cool uh tensions are reducing ha austria hungary doesn't want to provoke us all right well it makes sense but it's annoying uh, again, I think I just had a ship be completed. That's this one here with no captains. So, and this is a heavy cruiser. One of the ones that I'm not that happy about, but still. Can I assign, and then we're learning this together, commander. Here we go. Assign a new commander. I don't want to put my brilliant guy on a heavy cruiser. Let's just grab this guy here. Big Relly, he is average. You know what? Actually, since I don't care about these ships, let's see. Let's give somebody new a chance who I don't know a, a chance to prove themselves. So Zanoni here, uh, you're able to be that captain. So that's fun. Hey, and now we're we're more better at gunning, and our docks are complete. Uh, and one of our other heavy cruisers is here. We get to see a French battleship that they've designed and are making. Uh, which looks a little more standard, but it's similar to mine. Like, they're running a lot of 10-inch guns, or 8-inch side guns, 12-inch, uh, 4 guns. It's a little smaller, it goes a lot slower. Same armor scheme, almost. Uh, so these are, are on par with my ships, but a little slower. And that speed's gonna give me a lot of advantages, as, as mentioned before, so... I'm actually okay with hearing that. Okay, so ship design is not progressing. We are working on getting destroyers, but we can't get them yet. So that'll be nice, though. I am going to need better screen ships. Um, especially, that's going to be what I'm going to work on right away. But we have more, and I kind of want to replace these in this entire pre-dreadnought um, thing with more battleships. And part of me says 
I should probably design a new ship now that I have the additional uh, the additional shipyard capacity. But I don't think so. Um, hmm. Actually, that's a hard choice to make. We could either build some... We have three choices here. We can either build more battleships of the same class, which honestly might be a good idea because these have everything I want in them. If I were to increase the displacement, I could put maybe a pair of 8-inch guns per side more and maybe a little more armor. Um, yeah, there's no point in build making a better ship and a better technology at this point, or vastly more. Uh, so that leaves me two choices. I've talked myself out of one, uh, which is build more of these. I have the money now to probably put two more up and then have a total of six being made, which can replace the entirety of my current fleet. Or I can start building bigger dock size right away. Um, and then build maybe one. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do a 50 50. We're going to do that, and I still have the money to build one more. There we go. Everybody's happy or unhappy, depending on how you look at it, which is, means it's a good compromise. Okay, here we go. So, do you want to have a. No, I'm going to hit no. And that didn't forward the turn. Thank you. Okay, so this is the ship here that just got made. It's another heavy cruiser. Oh, it's the kind I like, too, actually. Um, so for this one, I wouldn't mind throwing a better commander on it. So this average guy here, you know what? We'll throw him on there. And moving forward. Heavy cruiser the British are making with 8-inch guns, lots of 6-inch guns, 20 knots. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're on parity. Uh, Watertight integrity still being installed. Dling. I misclicked. Hopefully that wasn't too brutally loud. I'll double-check the recording. Um, not promising I'll edit it if it is, but if it is, I'll, I'll make sure that I uh, change the sound settings for Windows to be quieter. Um, all right, so, oh, I just realized our background music faded a, a little bit ago. Eh, it's okay. Uh, I will, uh, we'll get another set on for next time. This episode's almost over. I'm probably going to call it soon. Um, so we have another cruiser that just went in. Uh, it's the meh class. So we'll use that to test new commanders. So you, we don't know what you're like. Here's a command of a questionable heavy cruiser. Prove yourself and we'll promote you. Um, that's a working up. austria Hungary's getting angry, which is good. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Gunnery competition. Uh, so the Prime Minister thinks that we should host a gunnery competition. He believes it'll increase morale. Uh, in combat readiness, uh, it'll cre increase maintenance costs for a month, but that's that's fine. I've got the money. Um, they don't, and I, I, you know, I can kind of agree with the the idea here, where like they don't give relevant combat situation, but it's good for morale, like really. And then you can tow it around on your ship. You know, you can have like a, a trophy or like a seal on it, being like, "Hey, we won the gunnery competition." Uh, it helps build a. Uh, I think the term is esprit de corps. Uh, for that ship, right? It, it helps with this kind of story. It's history. Um, I used to be in Navy cadets. Um, and so uh, our buildings that we would run cadets in, we'd treat them like they were a ship. Uh, and they had seals and they had a bit of a, a kind of, I think the term is esprit de corps that you can use for that. Uh, where, you know, the building or, you know, is representing a ship has a history and and a, a history of training and and that gets carried on to the each person that is there uh, it's really cool anyways i love these ideas i like i like these and if i can afford them i'll always do it and it gives you a little bit of a thing here saying hey this uh, light cruiser actually won which is pretty cool i'm not sure what kind of competition it was but that's awesome and would you look at this so one of those guys that i threw in to prove himself turns out he's kind of dog shit um, and that's fine. He's on a ship I don't care about, so I'm not going to worry about spending prestige to fire him or move him to a, a light cruiser or a corvette. I could, but, like, what's the point? Um, he's on a ship I don't care that much about, so I think that was a good move. The Philippines are rebelling. Philippines are still rebelling. 
Philippines are still rebelling. Now, sometimes you don't get those notifications. I think what that means, if you get that notification, is that it's actually progressing. Uh, so I think the Spanish are going to lose the Philippines here. The cats are knocking things all over the place. Spy from Great Britain. Um, I'm going to denounce them because it will give me a budget increase, even if it increases tension a bit. Uh, I don't want to go with to war with Great Britain. I, I don't. Um, if this game of chicken gets too hot, I will do everything I can to avoid war with Great Britain. If we go to the Almanac, look at that tonnage. Look, just, just look at that tonnage. They're twice my tonnage. And sure, they have a global empire. They have 21 battleships. They have more battleship tonnage than I have in my entire navy. Don't fuck with the British. They rule the seas at this time frame for a reason. They they want to keep that massive empire theirs under their thumb, and they understand that the seas are the way to do it. Um, so we're not going to mess with them too much. At this point, I will take almost any event to lower that, even if it costs me one prestige at this point. were visited by Japan. Uh, their rust buckets uh, with differently, indifferently trained soldiers and in indolent officers are no match for our Navy. Um, so that'll give me prestige. It'll increase tension a bit. I could also just do something kind of neutral and be like, oh, hey, it was great to have you here. And we can say we were impressed with them, which would lower tensions, but also cost me prestige. I don't really care too much about Japan. I'm going to insult them because it makes us look good. I am going to handle this spy quietly. Speaking of spying, I actually have not set my spy priorities. Uh, let's do that after this. I know I was forgetting something. So seeing my um, relationship with Britain now and my, my lack of want to go to war, I'm actually not going to spy on them. Normally you want to spy on Britain because they have good tech. Uh, we're not going to. We're going to spy on them. We're going to spy on uh, the French, the Germans. Little on the Austrians just to know what they're doing. Not that they're going to be of much use. Uh, and that's probably it for now. Uh, it does cost a little bit. You can see I'm spending $350, uh, dollars, pounds, euros. I should really know what the Italian's money name is. Because this is, of course, way before the euro. Um, I knew this at some point. Oh, well, I'll look it up at some point. Uh, but whatever the Italian money is, and of course these are just funds, they're representation, everybody uses the same funds, uh, normalized to price of gold or something like that. Hey, Angola, I, that's, that's, Angola, where is Angola? Give me a second. Angola, where are you? This is probably, as long as it's not in the Mediterranean, I don't care. I'm almost positive it's not. It's probably in Africa from what I think. Yes, yes it is. Southern Africa. No concern to us. You take what you want, Britain. Uh, and then the map will automatically take us there. And yet, there it is. So, um, not too worried about that. Uh, again, my aspirations are here. If they were taking, you know, Libya or... Greece or Turkey or Albania, I'd be upset and maybe risk tensions. Although, as 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 the British, as this is kind of by design by the British, I probably wouldn't even fuck with them. I'd probably let them, and it's because they're that scary. And that's what fleet and being kind of means. So it's that the doctrine of having such a huge fleet that nobody even wants to fight you, like a fleet that doesn't even have to fire its guns to be effective, is incredible. And that's what the Brits have, right? Like, I don't want to fight them. I will actually cede territory I want to them for now until I build up because I know uh, I can't take them. Uh, hey, remember how I said I would actually um, lower tensions <laughs> if given the opportunity? It's, it's time for that. Uh, I'm not going to safeguard our interests. I'm not going to even say that we should just kind of quietly do this. I'm going to openly tell my government, I'm not ready for war, and we should apologize to the British. Um, and we're very sorry for whatever misunderstanding. Uh, <laughs> and quietly build up our, our thing. So it's going to cost me prestige. I've been building prestige, so I can take that. 
and it's actually going to lower tension, so it's kind of a double whammy. Uh, my budget's gone up quite a bit. Uh, we're building quite a bit. We're doing good. So we're going to continue on. New docks are completed. Excellent, excellent. Hey, we have 11-inch guns. They're still minus two, so I don't really care. Uh, that's our first big technological breakthrough. What a, what a great one. All right, well, with that dock size up and with this little crisis, diplomatic crisis with Britain kind of there, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, this has been a good first episode, uh, you know, about 50 minutes. Expect most episodes to be a half an hour. I was kind of just stretching out to see if we get anything interesting to happen. But, uh, yeah, at this point I'm quite happy. Uh, we have a good bit of, uh, battleships being made. These are going to be decent enough to use until dreadnoughts come by. Like, I'm happy with the design. Uh, I do think with a 19,000 ton dock, we'll probably design another ship soon. But after these ships are made, I might make one more. Yeah, because I do want to replace everything, so I'm going to quickly do that now. Uh, we're going to actually just make one more. Uh, the Sardinia. Um, we're going to make one more, and that's going to be it. Uh, after that, we're going to go start making screen ships. I'm going to design a new light cruiser. Uh, and we're going to start making a bunch of light cruisers to be able to screen these. And as soon as those are built, these get scrapped. I'm, I'm getting rid of all these terrible battleships. Uh, I might keep the Italias for a, or the uh, Cayo Dulio class um, for a bit, but they're they're not long for this world. Um, but yeah, so next episode we'll be designing a light cruiser. Uh, trying to piss off the Austro-Hungarians a little bit more um, and uh, probably scrapping our old, uh, pr old, old pre-dreadnoughts or pre-pre-dreadnoughts uh, and having more modern just pre-dreadnoughts. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, this is the first episode of a series and I will not be shilling for likes and comments and all that, but this is A, the first episode of a series uh, and B, um, it's also the first real game upload on this channel. Um, so if you can throw a like, throw a comment, um, I would really appreciate it. And if you made it to this point in the video and you've listened to me ramble on for an hour, you, you probably don't mind my content, I hope. So I would appreciate if you could, uh, again, I won't really be asking for that other than maybe on the first episode of the series. It makes me not something I want to do. Um, but I would like to see some growth on the channel. It would be kind of cool. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one.